Okay, welcome everybody. So this is just a short sequence that is aiming to come at uh, the whole coronavirus COVID-19 situation, crisis uh, affecting many regions of the world, if not all regions of the world. Uh, coming at it from a, a slightly different perspective. This is in dedication to a triad of animal, non-human animal connections to the crisis. Uh, there's probably others as well, but these are the three that uh, immediately uh, occurred to me. So uh, the animal reservoir origin of the virus is, is currently unknown, but it is uh, considered uh, certain, if not very close to certain, uh, that um, the virus is of animal origin and uh, more than 50% of emergent diseases uh, affecting humans are of animal origin. So the wild animal trade, the exotic wild animal trade um, has a lot to answer for in, in terms of such uh, zoonoses, these uh, diseases of animal origin and not only this but uh, industrialized farming industrialized animal farming also has a lot to answer for and has been home to various animal diseases so we're talking from those two perspectives of um, SARS uh, that occurred in the noughties uh, the, uh, the current one COVID-19 and even AIDS and Ebola all thought to have uh, animal origins to do with the wild animal trade and then we have bird flu, swine flu etc for uh, industrialized uh, animal farming diseases as well. The third aspect, the third uh, clear animal association with the current uh, outbreak is that in the midst of human panic uh, people are relinquishing, are abandoning their animals in fear of some um, uh, means of transmission from them to, to humans. And there is no uh, scientific evidence currently for this. So um, it, so we need to plea on people to continue to care for their uh, companion animals in these circumstances. So in honour of, of this triad of animal connections, uh, this is just a short sequence in dedication to uh, uh, these fellow uh, planetary beings uh, in recognition of our shared sentience and uh, the shared boat we all find ourselves in of uh, existence, if you like, sentient existence. And I'm going to keep it a quiet, fairly quiet practice. I'm going to introduce the names of the postures, uh, but other than that, to keep it quite quiet, minimal cueing, not silent, but minimal cueing. And hopefully this can also quiet some of the noise that we're all being hugely exposed to at the moment as well. Much of it for understandable and necessary reasons, of course. Okay, uh, so for this reason, it is um, more aimed at those with uh, some experience of yoga. Um, I won't be offering uh, tons of alternatives. I'll be uh, trusting that you are familiar enough with a posture to find your own comfortable variation with it. If it is a new one you've not done before, then maybe just experiment a little bit. Okay, so thanks very much for participating and uh, we'll now begin. Starting in Lion Pose Simhasana. So just become conscious of your breath. With the inspiration or reminder that the word animal comes from the Latin animalis, meaning to have breath or soul. So already we're seeing this connection of soul and animal. So let's embrace this feeling of unity through shared breath, shared ability to breathe.
all animals named in the postures we'll be visiting have been implicated uh, as animal reservoirs from the exotic trade of wild animals or implicated in industrialized animal farming. A few more breaths just to settle into your own animal body and to ground in our intention for the practice just to quieten down and, and dedicate practice to the named animals. And in a dedication to raising awareness amongst fellow humans, including ourselves, of our interconnected actions in these regards. Two more breaths. You can even endeavor to keep your eyes closed as we go through this sequence, if you like. It's all very low to the ground. So I'll leave that up to you. If not, just have a soft gaze, your choice. But coming onto all fours, the symbolic animal posture, perhaps. And we'll prepare for cat cow moving in and out of cat and cow with an inhale and exhale in a little flow before we linger for four breaths, holding statically at the end, which I'll thank you so, when you're ready. Can be slow or fast flow here, whichever you prefer. We're thinking of the civet cat in particular, but visiting all domestic cat and big cat postures in honor of the cat. Two more rounds. And then on the next inhale, hold the cat pose. Still let the breath flow though. Three more inhales and exhales. And then transitioning into cow also for four breaths. Good, and then come back to a neutral spine to transition into tiger pose, another big cat, Vyagrasana. So we'll point the right foot up to the ceiling. And then on an exhale, bring the knee towards the chest. On the next inhale, hold the foot there, keep the breath flowing, take an exhale, and then breathe in and out. As you take the left hand round to find the foot, if you can, or your own variation, 
pushing the hand into the foot if possible. And breathing four breaths. And on that fourth exhale or there around, just release. Release the wrist a moment. A brief pause before we transition to the other side. One more. And then leave the foot up there for one-handed Vyakasana, one-handed tiger pose. One more full round of breath. Releasing gently on the exhale. And then we're just going to tuck the toes under and sit back onto the toes, onto the heels even. And my head will disappear out of the shoulder at this moment, it really doesn't matter. Cuddle in the knees and the feet so they're close together. Have the arms down by the side. It may be helpful to have a, a block here if your arms are quite short, depending on your balance. But we're going into boar pose, Varahasana, i.e. the wild pig. So you may want to touch down that whilst you're initially getting into the posture. And then take the hands to the heart or above and over the head, pushing the hands together. You can experiment with lifting the buttocks away from the heels a little bit. Continue breathing. One more inhale. And then gently release back to all fours. We're going to take the right Foot in front, keeping the left knee under the hips. And you can either come onto the heel of the foot or keep the sole of the foot on the mat. And we're just going to relax over until we feel a good stretch and the back of the leg. Ada Hanumanasana, half monkey pose. We can either stay here for a long time, perhaps experimenting with changing the position of the leg to more diagonal to accentuate a different area of the back of the leg for a stretch, or experiment with on the heel, the sole of the foot, or shortly we can extend into a version of a full Hanumanasana. named after Hanuman the monkey god, of course. So how would our actions as a species alter if we were truly respecting the divinity or mysterious nature of other animals? If you wish, 
begin to transition into a variation of a practice of full monkey pose. It may not be a full expression yet or at all in this lifetime. a particular variation you like to experiment with, feel free. Two more breaths. And then in your own way, gently and carefully coming out of our posture. And transitioning over to the other side again in your own way. Often in yoga. There's many hybrid uh, animals uh, in mythology, often that postures are named after or um, fantastical animals. Uh, so numerous hybridizations, not just two, but many animals mixed together. We can think about that as a reminder that Aesthetics are unimportant, we're all kin under the skin. And indeed, animal welfare science in modern times is providing a lot of extra evidence for that as well, all similar neuronal architecture going on under the skin uh, as evidence for feeling pain and emotional experiences in a similar way. Coming into our chosen variation of half monkey pose or your own variation or practice of full monkey pose. I hope some of you are maybe utilizing many uh, bolsters and cushions here under the hips. That's your preference. Can make this posture nice and restorative. Try to keep balance by practicing similar on each side, unless there's a particular reason not to. Two more breaths. And then in your own way, coming out of that posture. One more time, coming up onto the knees. Or camel pose, again, your variation thereof. If you want to go all the way back to touch the heels, that's fine. Indeed, uh, if you've practiced full monkey pose and cat pose and tiger pose earlier on, they were all uh, back opening uh, postures. So good preparation for camel pose or strasana, but it's also uh, perfectly fine just to place the hands at the base of the back. And inhale to lengthen the spine and then ease back into your variation. So 
when you're ready, coming back up and coming into a cross-legged position. There's two more postures uh, I'd like to visit. Uh, that is Kukutasana, Cockerel Pose. Actually, the one of the two very oldest documented uh, standing postures um, out of all of them, not just the animal postures, but all standing postures uh, from around 800 CE. So very connective for our very ancestors as well. Now the full posture is quite challenging. Feel free to go into it if you know what you're doing. You can either take half lotus or full lotus or just uh, plain cross-legged. And if you're if it's a struggle to get the arms through the gaps of the legs, then we can simply practice pushing uh, the buttocks off the floor on the sides here and sometimes help to have blocks as well. And it may be that you can get your arms through, but then it's a bit of a practice and a play to raise up onto the, the hands. That's completely fine. You know, just have a little play. around 30 seconds more to have your own little play. Can help sometimes have a bit of momentum, but not too much delicate balance. And then just gently release the pressure on the wrists. Take your time coming out of that posture. Leave the right leg folded. Take the left leg behind. We're going to finish with and more relaxation pose that are applicable to the whole of the animal kingdom, ourselves included. And in dedication to recovery for human population and currently, uh, but most of all the non-human animal population as arguably they are in much more dire straits than ourselves and largely uh, to a great degree uh, due to ourselves as well. So shifting the emphasis, the power dynamics in our, in our mind, the amount of space taken up by different mythical species barriers, according to, to borrow language from Jonathan Dickstein, my yoga scholar. Okay, so this is a flowing movement. We're just um, breathing out as we go forward over the knee and breathing back in as we come back up. Around 10 times. Close your eyes. Our last posture. And we'll meet. 
knee to upright and you finish your next round. Maybe keep the eyes closed as we switch to the other side. Meeting at the top after your next round. And then bringing both knees back in together, finishing as we started in Lion Pose Simhasana. Resting the hands on the thighs. And in one big exhale all together, we're going to do a very soundful exhale. On the count of four, we'll exhale all together. You can stick your tongue out if you like to uh, really embrace uh, this traditional uh, posture. Uh, even cross the eyes if you like, uh, and this will help stretch the platysma muscle on the neck and just is a little bit of a great uh, exhalation release really and symbolic of the lion's roar as well so let's inhale for three and on the four exhale one two three back to stillness, just observing the effects of that little practice. And focusing on increased heart space for all individual beings. And final dedication to the hope for growing awareness amongst humans of our interconnectivity and shared sentience and vulnerability with other animals. And feel free to stay here longer for a little meditation. I'll leave you here. Thank you very much for joining me. And as a suggested little piece of homework, um, both bats and uh, pangolins are mentioned, uh, are implicated in wild trade zoonosis as well. So as suggested by Patanjali, uh, so-called father of yoga, um, in the commentaries of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, uh, we can observe uh, animals to uh, learn how to practice some postures. And as suggested in the Gedunda Samhita, one, one key modern, uh, one key Hatha Yoga text, uh, there's as many yoga postures in the world as there are uh, animal species or living species in the world. So even though we only know a certain number of postures at the moment, there's no uh, hold, there's no pause or end to that. So I suggest 
especially if we're at uh, home isolated from others. One thing to keep us occupied could be watching wildlife videos on YouTube uh, of bats and of pangolins. Interestingly, they have, they're both mammals uh, with bats, the only mammals with flight, pangolins, the only mammals with a fully scaled body. So both quite rare in that regard. Uh, and yeah, observe them both and maybe see if you can have a little play of a, of a new posture as inspired by bats and pangolins. Thank you very much. Bye for now.